Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. One really important aspect of cooking is properly maintaining your equipment. In this video, we're gonna take a long look at cast iron pans. How do you maintain them? How do you season them? What can, can't, and should you do with them? The answers to all your questions lie just ahead. Let's get to it. Ingredients, or tools, I guess? One not very well seasoned cast iron pan, surprise! Vegetable oil of your choice, but I strongly recommend canola or grapeseed oil because it does not have a strong taste. Reasonably durable paper towels to wipe the oil around your pan. You wanna rip off four sheets at a time and fold them over. Set your burner to a not murder level heat, specifically 40 to 50% power, and get your cast iron warming up. You can put some oil in right away because we need to cover for the cooking area of the pan in order to properly carbonize the seasoning. Let's stop here for a moment because there are some things related to cast irons that we need to talk about before proceeding. If you want to just get to the seasoning process, just skip ahead to the listed time on the screen. For example, if you're not familiar with the word carbonize, here's what it means. We are using this process to develop a nice coating on the pan so that food is more or less unlikely to stick to it. Oil will absorb into the pores of your cast iron pan as well, which is something we want. There's plenty of arguments in favor of seasoning the whole pan, but that is only possible if you season it in the oven. My issue putting the pan upside down in the oven for an hour is that you have no control over how the seasoning is distributed and, assuming you know what you're doing, it takes much longer than a stovetop season. Also, you can buy a pre-seasoned pan and you shouldn't need to season the outside except maybe once in every great while. Basically, just take care of your pan and it will take care of you. I'll go over some ways to maintain your cast iron pan near the end of the video. Let's get back to our method. While your oil is heating up, fold one of your paper towels several times and use it to push the oil around your cast iron pan, taking care to coat the sides and the rim. You can do the handle too if you like, but you're not gonna cook with that part, so I say skip it. Once you've applied the first coating of oil, go ahead and place a bit more oil in the pan. You don't want it drowning per se, but you want enough so if your pan starts to unevenly season, you have the ability to correct it. Let your pan get super hot. Turn your heat up to 70% and in two minutes, turn it up to 90% and wait until it starts to smoke. During this time, just make sure the oil stays in a relatively even layer across your pan. Once your pan starts to smoke, let it do so for up to three minutes and then turn off the heat. Please note that there's a time lapse that makes it look like I've turned my heat off significantly sooner than 180 seconds, but that is not actually what happened. Now, you're gonna let your pan cool and have the oil absorb into whatever pores your cast iron has available. During the cooling phase, use your remaining set of paper towel to keep the oil evenly dispersed on the bottom and sides of your cast iron pan. Continue wiping the oil around your pan until you have either mopped it all up or it has become one with the surface. You don't need to completely scrape out your pan. You'll notice if you do a quick web search at that properly seasoned cast iron pans have a little sheen to them. Also, if you scrape out your pan, you'll have to start the seasoning process over. Yay, for wasting time. This picture of my pan is what it looks like during the cooling process. Check it out now that I've finished spreading the oil around. Here, I've just used my pan and have removed the excess oil. Let's talk about how to clean it. I'm not gonna use soap or a sponge because I feel like it really rips off the seasoning. I use my hands to get the gritty bits that I wasn't able to spatula into the trash. And when I'm done, I use a paper towel to remove excess fat and some water. Back over to the stove. All you have to do is heat your pan at about 50% burner capacity and pour in a tablespoon of oil. Admittedly, the pan doesn't look like it needs seasoning right now, but we're gonna do it anyways because re-seasoning your cast iron after you use it is just a great habit to get into. Now let's talk about long-term pan maintenance. Here's what you can, can't, and should do with your pan. Here's what you can do with your cast iron. You can put it under very high heat on your stovetop and into your oven. You can fry, cook, and bake whatever food you want on it to a reasonable extent, of course. You can wash it with water. See little asterisks here because you don't wanna put soap in it, but like washing it with water is fine. And you can use metal utensils in it while you're cooking. I recommend that you use silica, but you can use metal without damaging the pan. Here's what you can't do if you want your cast iron to stick around. You can't leave water, liquids, or wet-ish foods in your pan since that will cause rust. 
You can't cook with a lot of acid, like tomatoes and wine, as it will damage your seasoning. You cannot put it in the dishwasher. This will severely damage your seasoning and may cause some pretty gnarly rust. You cannot wash it with soap. I've seen some people naysay about how I feel with washing a cast iron with soap, and my response is disregard my advice at your own risk. Now here's what you should do with your pan. You should re-season it after every use, but especially if your pan looks like it needs it. How do you know if it needs it? It will have lost some of its luster. If you're not starting over with your seasoning, just repeat the above steps with a couple tablespoons of oil and you should be fine. You should also store your cast iron in a place where it will be minimally exposed to moisture. This will help prevent rusting and damage to your pan. And lastly, you should also use utensils that are silica when you're interacting with the pan because they are less likely to scratch off the seasoning. Again, you can use metal, but the goal of putting the seasoning on in the first place is to make it last as long as possible. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and leave me a comment below if there's anything you'd like to add or critique. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can see when I post new stuff. I'll see you guys in my next video.